this video, we will demonstrate how changing the concentration of the reactants will affect the rate of the reaction. Before this, we will explain the theory behind chemical reactions. All chemical reactions occur at specific rates. The rate of a chemical reaction depends on several physical and chemical factors. These factors are the concentration of the reactants, the temperature of the reaction, the pressure of the reaction, and the presence of a catalyst, which is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change. The rate of a chemical reaction is given by the equation rate equals the product of the rate constant K, the molar concentration of reactant A to the order of M, and the molar concentration of reactant B to the order of N. This is known as the rate law. The rate constant K gives a numerical value to the rate of the chemical reaction. The letters M and N, seen as exponents, are quantities that can only be determined through experimentation. Each reactant must be varied separately while the other is kept constant. The effect on the rate of the reaction is observed and noted. If a particular change in the concentration of one of the reactants has no effect, then the exponent is zero and the reactant is zero order. If doubling one of the reactants causes the overall rate to double, then the exponent is one and the reactant is first order. If doubling one of the reactants causes the overall rate to quadruple, then the exponent is 2 and the reactant is second order. The overall order of the reaction is determined by adding M and N. In this experiment, we will be using sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid as reactants as seen in this equation. By alternately varying the concentration of each of the reactants, we will be able to determine the order of sodium thiosulfate the order of hydrochloric acid, and ultimately the order of the entire reaction. In order to determine the effect of concentration on the rate of the reaction, we will follow the reaction by using the colorimeter to monitor the formation of the solid sulfur generated. The solid sulfur will block the light and the amount of blockage is directly proportional to the amount of sulfur in suspension. Observe how the reaction between the sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid result in a white cloudy solution caused by the formation of sulfur substrate that obscures the X at the bottom of the flask from view. In order to begin the experiment in a safe manner, proper laboratory apparel is required. First, make sure you have your safety goggles that will fully protect your eyes. Next, make sure you have long pants and closed-toed shoes. Do make sure that long hair is tied back. And finally, ensure that your gloves fit properly in order to ensure full protection from any chemicals. Now we have to prepare our samples. The 6 molar hydrochloric acid was already prepared, but we must prepare our own 0.2 molar sodium thiosulfate solution. In order to do this, we must measure out a specific amount of solid sodium thiosulfate and calculate the amount of water it will take to create the molarity we will need. We measured out 1.64 grams, and now we need to calculate how much water we need to make a 0.2 molar solution. Make sure you have your calculator and a periodic table nearby. Through the use of your periodic table, you will discover that the molar mass of sodium thiosulfate is 158.11 grams. To begin the calculations, start with 1.64 grams of sodium thiosulfate. Now multiply by 1 mole over the molar mass of sodium thiosulfate. Then multiply by 1 liter over the molarity we are seeking. You want to make sure that all of your units will cancel. Now multiply by 1,000 milliliters over 1 liter. This will ensure that the liters will cancel and our final answer will be in milliliters. Now use your calculator to compute the amount of water we will need to create a 0.2 molar sodium thiosulfate solution. Through your calculations, you will discover that we need 51.86 milliliters of water to create our desired molarity. Now measure out our 51.86 milliliters through a graduated cylinder and make sure to pour all of the water into a 100 milliliter beaker. 
We're now going to add our 1.64 grams of solid sodium thiosulfate into the water. Make sure to stir until it's completely dissolved. Let's prepare our samples. Each cuvette will hold 2 milliliters of its designated solution. Now measure out 2 milliliters of distilled water and place this into your first cuvette. We will now be calibrating our colorimeter. Place your cuvette of distilled water into your colorimeter. Make sure to close the lid tightly and then press calibrate. Now let's start our samples. Cuvette 2 doesn't need any water. Cuvettes 3 and 4 both need 0.5 milliliters and cuvette number 5 needs 0.75 milliliters of distilled water. Now we're going to add our sodium thiosulfate solution. Cuvettes 2 and 3 each need 1 milliliter. Cuvette 4 needs 0.5 milliliters and cuvette 5 needs 0.25 milliliters. Now for the hydrochloric acid. Cuvettes 2, 4, and 5 each require 1 milliliter, while cuvette 3 requires 0.5 milliliters. You want to do these one at a time so the reactions don't occur before you're ready to test it. After adding your hydrochloric acid, invert your cuvette, place it into the colorimeter, close the lid tightly, and then press play on your vernier. Your graph will appear shortly. Now watch your graph and see how absorbance changes over time. After adding the hydrochloric acid, repeat this for each of the solutions. Now you're going to want to save all of your data. You can plug your flash drive directly into the vernier. This allows you to save each trial under its own name. You will now have all of your data readily available for any time you may need it. Once you've completed your experiment, make sure that you have a designated waste container. You want to pour all completed reactions and any unused materials into this waste container. Thoroughly rinse each of the cuvettes and any other materials with distilled water. Now it's time to clean all of your glassware. Use soap and warm water to thoroughly clean all of your glassware. Make sure all of it gets set out and completely dries. Now that the data has been collected, it is time to use this to determine the rate law for this reaction. Remember again that rate law follows the equation rate is equal to K, which is the reaction constant, multiplied by the molar concentration of sodium thiosulfate raised to the order of M, multiplied by the molar concentration of hydrochloric acid raised to the order of N. Through our calculations, we will be able to determine the orders of M and N, and use this to get a more complete picture of the overall rate law for this equation. In order to do so, we must first extract the data from the vernier and upload it into a system such as Microsoft Excel, where we will be able to create a graph of absorbance versus time. We will be looking at run three in this case. First, you must select the data for absorbance over time. Once the data is selected, click Insert, and then find the line graph. Make sure to label your titles. As you can see, the data for absorbance is displayed on the y-axis, and the x-axis has the time intervals. If you look at the data, samples for absorbance were collected at 3 second intervals, so we will have to factor this in when we do our calculations later. I have gone ahead and created graphs for the four different trials of this experiment. So now we must figure out the overall rate for each reaction. In order to do so, you must select points along the graph where it is observed that there is a constant change in absorbance over time. Again, let's take a look at run number three. Notice that as the graph progresses, it can be seen that at this section right about here, the absorbance seems to be changing at a fairly constant rate. In order to find that rate, we will have to find the slope of this section of the graph by taking the change in absorbance or y values and dividing it by the change in time or the x values. So begin by selecting a point where it seems that the rate begins to increase at a constant rate. That would be right about here. Now 
Note that at this point, that the absorbance value is approximately 0 0.1149, rounded to four decimal places, at the 28th time interval, or 84 seconds. I've entered these values here. So now you must select a point where it appears that the section of the graph tapers off. That would be right about here. At this point, the absorbance value is 0 0.3151, rounded to four decimal places, at the 50 second time interval, or 156 seconds. I've entered this information here. So now, calculations will need to be done in order to figure out the rate for this specific run. To do that, you must take the change in y values by subtracting 0 0.1148 from 0 0.3151 and dividing that by the change in x values by subtracting 84 from 156. When you do so, you figure out that the rate for this run is approximately 2.7819 times 10 to the negative third. I have gone ahead and calculated the rates for each of the other trials of this experiment and placed the data here. Now that we have the rates for each of the trials, we can use an analytical method to determine the order of the reaction with respect to each of the components. Here, I have outlined the molar concentrations used in each run. On a side note, in order to find the molar concentration, you must multiply the amount of solution used by the molarity in order to find the overall moles. Take for example trial number one. We know that going back to the experiment, we used two milliliters of hydrochloric acid that had a molarity of six moles per liter. Multiplying that by a conversion factor, making sure that the units cancel, we get that the molarity was 1.2 times 10 to the negative second moles. I have gone through and done this already for all of the trials. In order to figure out the reaction order with respect to each of the components, you must observe the changes that occur between the molar concentration of the component and the rate between two of the specific trials. Let's take for example trials 1 and 2. As you can see, the molar concentration of sodium thiosulfate remains constant as the molar concentration from the second to the first trial doubles. Therefore, it increases by a factor of 2. Looking at the rate, if you divide the rate in trial 1 by the rate from trial 2, you can see that the rate changes by a factor of 1.9711. Approximating this to 2, the reaction order with respect to hydrochloric acid is 1. Now let's take a closer look at trials 1 and 3. In this instance, the molar concentration of hydrochloric acid remains constant as the molar concentration from trial 3 to 1 of sodium thiosulfate doubles. Therefore, the change in molarity is by a factor of 2, and by dividing the rate in trial 1 by the rate in trial 3, you get that the rate changes by a factor of 2.0702. Now approximating this to 2, as was done previously, you can see that the reaction order with respect to sodium thiosulfate is 1. Therefore, it is a first order reaction with respect to sodium thiosulfate. Now to put this all together, we have to remember that rate law follows the equation, rate is equal to K, the reaction constant, multiplied by the molar concentration of sodium thiosulfate raised to the order of M, multiplied by the molar concentration of hydrochloric acid raised to the order of N. Since we know that the reaction is first order with respect to hydrochloric acid, we also know that N is equal to 1. Since the same is true with sodium thiosulfate, being that it is a first order reaction, we also know that M is equal to 1. Therefore, the overall rate law for this equation is rate is equal to K, the reaction constant, multiplied by the molar concentration of sodium thiosulfate, multiplied by the molar concentration of hydrochloric acid. Now that we have a model of the rate law in which this reaction follows, we can figure out the overall order of this reaction. Since we know that the overall order is determined by adding together the exponents associated with the molar concentration of the components, 
the m and n values in this case, we know that the overall order for this reaction is 2. Therefore, even though it is a first order reaction with respect to the, each of the individual components, the reaction is overall a second order reaction. We know this because 1 plus 1 equals 2. Knowing that this reaction follows the specific rate law, the reaction constant of K can also be calculated. In order to do so, you would have to run a series of short chemical reactions in which the molar concentrations of sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid are kept constant, and the initial rate is calculated for a variety of trials. From there, the average initial rate as well as the molar concentrations of the two components can be plugged into the equation, and the value of K for this reaction can be calculated.